Firstly, we need to check the integrity of the cartilage of the lunate fossa of the radius and of the proximal pole of the capitate. The first step of the technique is the performance of the volar central nicalpar portal. This portal is made under the atroscopic control with the atroscope located in the ulnar nicalpar portal. Next, the resection of the bones begins by removing the volar portion of the lunate. This step is performed initially with a 3 mm spur entering through the volar central nicalpar portal and looking from dorsal. Once the volar space is increased, a 4 mm spur can be used to remove faster the volar portion of the lunate. The next portion of the bones to be removed is the volar and proximal portion of the scaphoid. The 4 mm spur is used to remove the inner portion of the bone, leaving the peripheral cartilage as if it were an eggshell. This way, it is less probable to damage the cartilage of the cavitate. Furthermore, a periostotum entering from dorsal can be used to protect the surface of the cavitate. The third bone to be resected is the volar portion of the trochetum, using again the burr from volar and looking from dorsal through the radial nicalpar portal. Here you can see the aspect after the resection of the volar portion of the proximal row. Now the position of the instrument should be changed. The atroscope is introduced through the volar central nicapa portal and the burr from dorsal. The dorsal portions of the lunate and the trichetum are resected, removing the bone with the burr and the peripheral portion of the bones with the pituitary ranger. Finally, the dorsal portion of the scaphoid is resected in the same way to the radial nicalpar portal. This is the final result. This is the radio scaphocapitate ligament. The trapezium trapezoid joint on the radial side. the distal radius on the proximal surface and the PC form and hamate capitate joint on the ulnar side. The final x-rays are this extraction and without tractions.